Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. There seems to be one constant among every respectable, innovating power tool brand, and that's battery evolution. 18650 lithium ion, 21700 cell batteries, and even pouch cell LiPo batteries lately. Milwaukee as well, 18650 packs, 21700 cell high output, and their yet unreleased polycell forge battery packs. DeWalt will do you even one further, 18650, 21700, just barely being the first pouch cell tool brand with power stack, and they make by voltage packs that work on both 20 volt and 60 volt tools that can also even stack together into 120 volt tools that work as corded. Brands like Metabo HPT do this as well, 18650, 21700, and Multivolt. And even brands like Rigid are getting back into 21700s. Harbor Freight Hercules as well using the same Samsung 30T and 40T cells. And now Ryobi jumping on that train too. Every brand anywhere near the top except for Makita LXT, which sure would come in handy for this three quarter inch impact we just bought to rank on our rank chart. And this XAG04Z grinder we haven't tested before and bought for this episode as well. That's right, one of the longest, if not most established brands on the planet called it quits with five and six amp hour 18650 batteries. So we aim to change that today by putting cells inside power tool brands wish they could offer you. They're so spicy to see if plugging them into existing Makita tools juices them up and displaying just how much they've left on the table. Now don't go talking to me about Makita XGT while undoubtedly powerful based on what we've tested thus far. XGT is basically a whole different tool brand as none of the tools, batteries, or chargers interchange. So it's no different from switching from LXT to say Milwaukee. Now 18 volt LXT probably do in large part that they got boxed in with their 18 by two tools that aren't sized to accept the wider 21700 cell battery packs. They basically called it a day here. On top of all that, they're near the top for brands whose batteries we've had call it quits. M18 batteries might fall apart at times, but Makita, they can just sort of die or just stop working even while still looking new at times. Which gives us a chance to rebuild a stock Makita battery with different cells and build our own 21700 cell pack today. By using this DIY kit that recently came on the market, we can put 21700 cells of our choosing in here and see how much we can pump things up. This was all several months ago and the latest hotness then was still the Molicel P42A 21700 that we made the assault flashlight with. Combined, this made for an 8.4 amp hour 2P configuration, basically an XE 8.0, but 8.4 amp hours and supposedly more discharge amps. This is how it does in a max torque of reverse test, stock Makita five amp hour battery first, up against the three quarter inch Milwaukee high torque and the half inch version of this tool as well. Six hundred and thirty six foot pounds of torque, a bit up on the half inch Makita, but nothing crazy and still shorter than Milwaukee. But this model's considerably longer in the tooth from its debut. And here's the new eight point four amp hour of our creation. Five hundred and sixty three foot pounds, so less and it lost two bars in the process somehow. So what's going on here? Less than a well already not that impressive five amp hour pack. Let's take a look by drawing a quite heavy load of 700 watts from a stock battery. We can see its voltage drop here to around 17, 16 and a half volts. Now that performed on our creation with the case off to see what's going on. That voltage drops down to 15, 14. 13 and a half volts. Oh, and this thing started smoking as well. Turns out it was burning through the metal connections. We need something more heavy duty. So we bought this much higher power spot welder that uses massive capacitors inside to charge up over time, then release all at once into now much thicker battery strips. And while we waited for that, the new, new Molicel P42Bs hit the market, said to be some of the ultimate in 21700 cell batteries out right now, 45 amps discharge and 4,500 milliamp hours of capacity, meaning this would become a nine amp hour battery, the size of an XE 8.0. 
This also gives us some time to dive into the stock Makita 5 amp hour battery inside the flashing dead no longer working pack we found Samsung 25R cells. You might find a few different cells through Makita's time making these things, but using 10 new ones of those 25Rs or identifying the problem cells, you could just replace these and find yourself on your way again with a healthy battery. Not a bad way to go. But that felt a bit boring for science sake, so we instead chose to buy a set of what's supposed to be the 18650 hotness, what Milwaukee uses in their high output M12 batteries, the latest Samsung 25S's. While the 25Rs have a max continuous discharge of 20 amps, these by the specs should pull 25 amps and they're twice as expensive. This lot of 10 25Rs was just 38.50, the 25S's was a full 80 bucks just in battery cells. So by using some 0.25 millimeter nickel strips, we were able to stitch these new cells together in a not pretty but effective way and patch that into the main board for a pack that theoretically not only works now, which is a plus, but has 50 more peak amps on tap, which also fit into the battery shell just fine. Let's take a look at this rebuilt sleeper 5 amp hour pack and see what it can do. This is the Makita LXT XAG04Z, a grinder we've not tested before because we tested their RPM adjustable one here. But A, does this perform any differently in power and speed to that? And B, what can a custom LXT battery like ours do? With a run-of-the-mill LXT pack, the O4Z grinder makes about 6,025 RPM, noticeably less than the equal RPM rated 16Z. When taxed until the tool stumbles or cuts off, it's able to make 450 watts within 2% of the other model. I'd call this a wash. Data-wise, the 16Z just seems to bring a little bit more extra speed, I suppose. So how much are Makita LXT batteries holding this back, though? With the Special Sauce 25S pack we just spot welded together, the same grinder makes 6,410 RPM, enough to close that gap here on the previous model. Nice. And when it comes to max beans, you're not going to be disappointed. Frankly, if this all made the same, we'd just put it away for personal Makita use and probably wouldn't even make this episode. But luckily for all of us, this admittedly fresh pack of charge cycled spicy cells makes 560 watts a very nice gain and noticeable on a power hungry tool such as a grinder. Which makes you wonder, can we do even better. We used eight strips of that 0.25 millimeter nickel over each battery cross section, two overlapping each other, and welded that all down to double up and better prevent what happened last time. Then routed these strips in a way that we could use 10 gauge wire without an obstruction in the battery case, which required a 260 watt soldering iron to get everything to warm up and play nice together. So there you have it, with a couple battery level indicator leads added on, a 9 amp hour hopped up 21700 cell LXT Makita pack that should absolutely slap. Well that's the plan at least. Do you remember the 16 to 17 volt stock battery that was dropping to just 14 and 15 on our first customization when pulling 700 watts of load? Try 18.7 to 19 volts under the same load now, not even dropping down to nominal voltage under 700 watts of load, booyah. So for RPM, the grinder now makes 6,510 RPM, a clean 100 up on the last test, but not a lot for a 8,500 RPM free speed tool. But peak power is where this bundle of trouble shines, well surpassing anything a tool of this color has ever made before and racking up 660 watts. 10 watt shy, so basically the same power as an M18. This represents a large gap between what Makita is currently or basically willing to offer an LXT and what the tools are actually theoretically capable of. Hey Makita, free R&D right here guys. Soak it up. On to the impact dyno to see if the 3 quarter inch Makita appreciates the batteries it deserves. Here's the sleeper pack with the 25S cells inside. Very nice and more than we expected to see with a tool like this, I guess it really was wanting more voltage and more current, but has just been making do with what it had. Let's see that formula played out to its fullest with the beans. Here it is.
751 foot-pounds, passing up the Milwaukee in this case, and over 100 foot-pound gain from a battery swap, although admittedly one that's a bit custom. I promise you no changes to the dyno, back-to-back -back runs, these tools just soak up that extra juice on tap, way more than we would have assumed, which considering we made a full episode on it, there was a risk these sort of just sucked, but would not have written up a script with this kind of gain just seems unbelievable on some very much non-2023 tools. Now when we're looking at a 15 second test, best run of three rather than median in our best case test, the drama is reduced a bit between the versions of this tool and the Milwaukee regains its lead, but let's visit the rank chart with this new 3 quarter inch impact we've never ranked before to see how it looks. In its test runs with the Makita made 5 amp hour, turned into points here, which includes a 530 foot pound forward working torque run as well to note. That's 53, 64, and 73. On our large drive size ranking, which includes one inch impact, space is not so much a concern here when you're using this class of sockets as much as weight is. So combined weight is compared to performance here, 8.1 pounds, 78.5 points, which puts it behind. But this model is also claiming just 780 foot pounds because it's sort of from a slightly bygone era of mostly accurately rating high torques, unlike some others, and gets 94% of claimed good stuff. 350 bucks is still a pretty penny these days for a tool older than my kids. 31.3 points, that totals 394, putting it, well, here where it is below the M18 3 quarter inch. But check this out, if Milwaukee instead offered our spicy 9 amp hour battery and bundled that with their 3 quarter inch impacts, that would make for 59, 75, and 78 points. This is a sign the tool is already being maxed out, not improving a lot from here to here. 86.3 points as a function of weights, and 99% basically matching their claim now, and 33.2 here. That's 431 points, slotting it way up here, mostly due to torque honesty at that point, but hey, it's not staying on this list, so we're gonna take the W. So why aren't brands making packs with these spicy cells? Well, they're expensive, for one, and this type of peak amp draw really can reduce their life cycle, which it can do on a Samsung as well, but there's some give and take there. I think a 9 amp hour battery this size, the size of a 6 amp hour on many other lines, would be pretty amazing though. The real question is, Makita, LXT, why you do this? As much as people like to harp on how there's too many batteries out right now, it's hard to keep up, new battery tech is the best and most immediate way to upgrade every one of your current tools that you've already bought. Some gain more than others obviously from it, but it seems LXT tools were built thirstier than what a 5 amp hour fuel tank can deliver, or 6 amp hour for that matter. We offer this as free R&D to the top brass at Makita, offer a 21700 cell higher capacity battery under LXT, one with like good cells in it, not like this, but like this and this. Put a no 18x2 sticker on it because it won't work on these things. You'll sell a ton and make a lot of Makita loyalists happy. Of course, that might bridge the gap a little bit closer to XGT tools, which would make the $100 extra tax on each model harder to justify, so I'm probably talking to myself right now. Would love to be proved wrong, though. We make episodes like this every Friday. There's a button you can press somewhere around there to be shown those. Thanks for watching.